The final early state in the Democratic primary is voted. So before we go hurtling towards Super Tuesday, let's look at what happened in that state, as well as what it means moving into the largest voting day of the primary. Because although some of the results in South Carolina were expected, there were a few surprises as well. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel for more updates on the Democratic primary and US politics more generally. The biggest story coming out of the vote on Saturday was Joe Biden, who had been staking much of his campaign on South Carolina. It was widely believed that Biden needed a win in the state to have a good chance of winning the nomination. So it's no surprise that most of the focus was on him as the results poured in. And the state didn't let Biden down. Almost immediately after polls closed, the press called the race in Biden's favour. And as more and more votes were counted, it became increasingly apparent that his win was going to be a big one. With 100% of precincts reporting, Biden came in first place in both vote and delegate total, winning 48.4% of the vote. This was a significant jump from where he'd stood in the polls before Saturday. In the lead up to the vote, Real Clear Politics had Biden at a polling average of 39.7%, meaning that he jumped by nearly 10 points. These extra 10 points came from previously undecided voters, as well as from other campaigns. It had also helped that popular South Carolina Congressman James Claiborne endorsed Biden earlier in the week, giving him an extra edge in the state. But in the end, what it really came down to was the simple fact that South Carolina voters tend to like Joe Biden. The state is home to a number of older, more moderate black voters, all of which are groups that Biden tends to do well with. People in South Carolina, as well as the wider South, tend to back candidates they know, and it's news to no one that Biden's been around the block a few times. All of this led to Biden gathering a remarkable favourability rating of 78% in the state, much higher than any other candidate. With all of this wind at his back, Biden was able to comfortably beat out his competition, coming in 28.5 points ahead of the second place finisher, Bernie Sanders. Bernie's momentum coming out of the first few states, as well as Biden slipping in the poll numbers, gave many Sanders supporters hope that Bernie could actually win South Carolina. In fact, many pundits began to theorise about this as well, with some speculating that Sanders could overtake Biden in the state, and effectively end the former vice president's campaign. This, however, did not happen. Before Saturday, Sanders had been polling at around 24% in real clear politics averages, a number which he was not able to replicate on voting day. Bernie garnered 19.9% in the vote, coming in a distant second to Biden. While Biden won 35 of the state's delegates, Sanders only won 13, and didn't carry any of the state's 48 counties. In fact, no other candidate beyond Biden managed to carry a single county. Sanders, however, at least managed to win a few delegates, which is more than can be said for everyone else. Coming in third, with 11.3% of the vote, was billionaire Tom Steyer. Steyer had focused nearly his entire campaign on Nevada and South Carolina, and after a dismal showing in Nevada, he was almost entirely dependent on a strong showing in South Carolina to continue. This was a showing he did not manage to get. Despite his enormous spending, Steyer didn't manage to clear the 15% viability threshold, the percentage of votes you need in order to be awarded any delegates. As the night rolled on and more and more votes were counted, it became clear that Steyer was going nowhere. So Steyer, recognising the end when he saw it, announced in his speech that he'd be dropping out of the race. Steyer was not, however, the only candidate to drop out following the vote on Saturday. Coming in fourth was Pete Buttigieg, who won 8.2% of the vote, narrowly beating Elizabeth Warren, who garnered 7.1%. The two hadn't been polling particularly well in the state, so their somewhat dismal finishes aren't particularly surprising. Both tend to poll much better among white than non-white voters, so South Carolina was never going to go particularly well for them. What came as more of a surprise was Pete's decision on Sunday to drop out of the race. Though he hadn't been polling particularly well, he hadn't been expected to drop out before Tuesday, and his decision could have a significant impact on Super Tuesday, after his supporters realigned themselves. He and Steyer do, however, seem to be the only candidates dropping out before Tuesday, meaning the rest are staying to battle it out in the biggest night of the primary so far. Coming in a few points behind Buttigieg and Warren is Amy Klobuchar, who picked up 3.1% of the vote, 
and has been on a downward trend for the past couple of weeks. Though she picked up a bit of momentum after New Hampshire, as that momentum has dissipated, she's found herself with an increasingly small share of the vote. The final candidate to mention is Tulsi Gabbard, who, yes, is still in the race, and accumulated 1.3% of the vote. It's likely that we'll see some of these candidates drop out after Super Tuesday, but it seems that they're all staying in place up until then. So, what does this mean for all of the candidates? Well, put simply, it means that the primary just got more competitive. In the weeks leading up to South Carolina, it appeared that Bernie Sanders was almost certainly going to win the nomination. But with Biden's massive victory on Saturday, that state of affairs has been called into question. And with Super Tuesday taking place only three days after South Carolina, Biden will, barring some unforeseen catastrophe, be able to carry a great deal of momentum forward into the largest day of voting of the primary. This could be very worrying news for Sanders, who now has to face the challenge of a reinvigorated Biden campaign. And with a number of Super Tuesday state polls appearing to be quite close, it's likely to be a difficult race for both politicians. This doesn't mean that Sanders' chances of winning the nomination are gone though. According to 538's primary model, he still has the highest chance of winning a plurality of delegates, with Biden trailing by a significant margin. The biggest story that model tells, however, isn't about Biden or Sanders. After Saturday's vote, the chances of no one winning a majority of delegates skyrocketed, with the forecast currently predicting a 66% chance of what's called a brokered convention. A convention in which no one has a clear majority. This will be the first brokered convention since 1952, and will be a bad sign for Democrats hoping to stop the spread of party division. We'll talk more about this in the approach to the convention in July if it appears likely, but what it means in the short term is that the race is likely going to heat up quite a bit in the coming days. Biden's big win is also bad news for his moderate opponents, who have all been vying to be the moderate alternative to Sanders. With the former vice president pulling off such a resounding victory, it's going to be significantly harder for Bloomberg and Klobuchar to win over moderate voters seeking to beat Sanders. Voters that their campaigns all desperately need. This is especially bad news for Bloomberg, who seems to have already taken a great deal of support from Biden in the Super Tuesday states, like Texas and Florida. If Biden can take back the momentum from Bloomberg in these states, he could massively turn the tide on his billionaire opponent come Tuesday. And that's a big if, especially with Bloomberg's ad budget dwarfing Biden's by multiple orders of magnitude. This doesn't mean that Super Tuesday is Biden's to lose though. Sanders still has quite a bit of momentum, and few of the states coming up on Tuesday favourable demographics to Biden, like South Carolina did. This is mainly because not many of the states have as high a percentage of African Americans in their electorates as South Carolina does, and even fewer are in the South, the region which Biden is strongest in. But what about the other candidates? Well, to put it simply, things aren't looking great for them. If South Carolina was a test to see if Buttigieg, Klobuchar, and to a lesser extent Warren could win over black voters, then they all failed. All three have struggled to reach black and non-educated white voters, and all three have had minimal success in this area. This is widely speculated to be one of the main reasons behind Buttigieg's decision to end his campaign, as African Americans are a key base of the Democratic electorate. Klobuchar had a bit more success in winning over non-college educated white voters, but hasn't managed to win over any sizable numbers in the African American community. Warren and Klobuchar's lacking numbers in these areas are, to put it mildly, a problem for them moving forward, as no Democrat in recent elections has won the nomination without widespread support among black voters. At this point in the race, it seems unlikely that either will be able to gain enough support to win the nomination. But that doesn't mean they won't have an effect on the outcome though. With three moderate candidates competing for similar votes going into Tuesday, Sanders could ultimately end up with the advantage. Granted, he is Elizabeth Warren to contend with in the progressive lane, but with her polling numbers sitting at around 10%, she's not likely to have a huge impact on him. Bloomberg, on the other hand, could have a significant impact, especially if Biden doesn't manage to make the most of his post-South Carolina momentum. Ironically, that means that Bloomberg's candidacy, which arguably began to stop a more liberal candidate from winning, could end up leading to a more liberal candidate's victory. But who knows, in a few days time, the primary could 
and likely will, look very different. All of it will depend on how the next 48 hours plays out. We'll be coming out with new videos discussing what Super Tuesday is, as well as its results, both videos set to come out in the coming days. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when the videos come out. You can also get involved in the conversation and follow along live on Discord. Special thanks to our Patreon backers whose support makes these videos possible.